Hi, I thought it'd be another good time to have another story. So story time with Pop. Today's story is Jam by Margaret Mayhe. Mr and Mrs Castle lived in a white house with a big green lawn. Their three children were called Clement, Clarissa and Carlo. Three little castles, said Mr Castle, but very small ones. More like cottages, really. Mrs Castle was the cleverest castle of the whole family. What a one she is, said Mr Castle. She could whip up a pot of atomic porridge. She could tuck a computer into bed and sing it to sleep with a lullaby. If she decided to go to the moon, I don't think she'd even need a rocket to get there. He was very proud of his wife. See her flying to the moon? One day, Mrs Castle announced that she had found herself a job. Important scientists were developing an electronic medicine to cure sunspots, and they had sent for Mrs Castle. But who is going to look after us? asked Clement. Isn't anyone going to be here when we come home from school? asked Clarissa. Carlo was too young to say anything, but he also looked worried. I shall be here, my dear little cottages, Mr Castle cried. You have no reason to be anxious. He washed dishes and then pegged them out to dry. Not only did he sweep the floors, he swept the ceilings too. He vacuumed the carpets, put the dough to rise in a warm place, wiped down the bench, had a quick cup of tea, planted a row of cabbages, folded the washing, baked the bread and a cake, put Carlo down for his afternoon sleep, had another cup of tea, cleaned the bath, prepared dinner, read the paper so as to be well informed, kissed the children when they came home from school and Mrs Castle when she came home from work and asked them all what sort of day they had had. Then he gave Mrs Castle a glass of sherry, handed her the paper and took the children out for a game on the big green lawn. He was an excellent house father. Indeed he was so good that one day he actually ran out of work. While he tried to think of just what to do next, there came a soft thud on the roof, and then another one. Sunspots, cried Mr Castle, and ran outside, but it was not the sound of falling sunspots he had heard, but ripe plums, tumbling off the old plum tree, which grew behind the house. Mr Castle was delighted. I'll show them, he cried. They think they know all my capacities, but I shall show them talents beyond their wildest dreams. Gathering up the fallen plums, he made three pots of plum jam. My dear, how wonderful, exclaimed Mrs Castle. Clarissa, Clement and Carlo thought it was wonderful too. The next day, many more plums fell from the tree and Mr Castle made 20, plot, 20 pots of plum jam. Try saying that fast. The following day, the ground under the tree and much of the roof were covered with big purple plums. Mr Castle made 30 pots of plum jam. See all the pots down the bottom? But the day after that, there were even more plums and Mr Castle had run out of jam jars. What a challenge, he cried. Not a single plum must be wasted. He filled all the vases in the house with jam. He filled the glasses they used for sherry. Even Carlos's rabbit mug and the teapot were filled with jam. See all the jam there? It's like a school for jam pots, said Clarissa. Your father is a born artist, said Mrs Castle. He is the Picasso of jam makers. But now we must eat it all up, said Mr Castle firmly. They began with jam sandwiches. Mrs Castle, Clement and Clarissa had jam sandwiches in the lunches. Mr Castle prepared them for every morning. Carlo, who was cutting new teeth, had jam on his crusts. Hooray, called Mr Castle, we've emptied the teapot already. We'll be able to have tea with our scones, pancakes, roly-polies and sponge cakes. That winter the roof leaked a little. Mr Castle's jam proved very useful for it stopped leaks as well as being delicious in, on steamed puddings. When the tile came off the bathroom floor, Mr Castle stuck them down again with jam. After weeks of devoted jam eating, they could put flowers in the vases again and drink sherry from glasses instead of from egg cups. I wouldn't care if I never saw another pot of jam in my life, Clarissa whispered to Clement. I probably should say, 
I wouldn't care if I never saw another pot of jam in my life, Clarissa whispered to Clement. But don't tell Daddy I said so. You can't help getting sick of jam, Clement agreed. See Mr Castle busy fixing things? In the meantime, they had jam with everything, and on everything, and under everything. Their dreams became haunted with jam. Clement dreamed that the sky opened and jam rained down on him. Clarissa dreamed of fat, shadowy jam pots marching through the night, crying out a terrible war cry of jam, jam, jam. It's a bit scary, isn't it? Mrs. Castle dreamed that it was proved that sunspots were caused by too much jam, and Carlo dreamed great jammy dreams as well. Their days were full of jam eating, and their nights of dreams all dripping with jam. They even woke up feeling sticky and not in the mood for breakfast. Jam on porridge, jam on toast with the cup of tea sweetened with jam to follow. Then one morning Mr Castle went to the cupboard to get down the next pot of jam only to find it was empty. There was not a single pot full left. Oh no. Let's have egg sandwiches for lunch said Mrs Castle. Let's have fish and chips suggested Clement. Spaghetti and salad cried Clarissa. And little Carlo can't talk but you can see what he's thinking about. But first, let's have a game on the lawn, said Mr Castle. We've eaten so much jam that we look like jam pots ourselves. We shall have to get back to our old shapes. While they were playing on the lawn, Mr Castle heard a soft thud on the roof. He looked up at the plum tree enthusiastically. A year of jam eating had gone by. The plums were ripe again. Oh, looks exciting, doesn't it? You know what? I think that might be the end of the story. And you can see little Carlo looking a little bit pensive. So I hope you enjoyed that. And on the back is the recipe. See ya.